Holy God, when you, in the creation of the world, declared light, light came. In your Son, light has come into this world, that all would come to see who you are. Teach us to be the light together in the darkness of the world and to enhance the world with your flavor of love and mercy and justice and grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So every time this uh, scripture comes up, I'm reminded of the little town that fooled the British. Who knows what town that is? What's a legend? where the St. Michael's, right? And so the legend, St. Michael's, Maryland, if you haven't been there, it's a delightful little uh, de uh, town. It's very touristy, but it's very nice to just walk around the shops. At Christmas time, it's really fun because the, the, the Christmas lights are awesome. Um, but uh, the, the, uh, uh, the legend goes that... Um, during the war with the British, the, uh, the people took the lanterns from the town and took them outside of town, right? Took them out towards T Tillman Island Way, right? And put them high on trees. And so, literally, the British overshot St. Michael's, right? Because they thought that's where the city was. Now there is one house in St. Michael's that's called the Cannonball House, and you can imagine why it's called that, because one missed and hit it, right? So this, this always reminds me about the power of light, right? Um, in the same way as today we have a lot about um, being the light, the saltiness, being, being justice in the world and practicing that and how important that is really as our fast from ourselves, right? From all that's within us that, that keeps us from practicing justice, practicing mercy, practicing grace, right? Well, God says fast from that, and Isaiah, fast from that, but feed the poor, put clothes on them, take care of um, uh, justice, right? Take care of mercy, and today we'll hear about uh, taking care of the energy in your house not only for to save money, but for the environment, right? All of that being important. So um, I'm always perplexed when I'm baking something sweet um, that it calls for salt. I'm like this is just so anti, like what? Like oh, right? Like why are we putting salt in the apple pie? I don't understand it. Or in you know, the cookies, why, I just, in fact, sometimes I like ignore it and don't put it in there, right? Because I'm like, this just doesn't in my mind make any sense, except for, from what I read, it really enhances the flavor. So now maybe, I, and by my comment, you know, I don't follow recipes very well, right? Uh, so uh, maybe I'll do that more often because it is a flavor enhancer. You know that in, uh, uh, previous history, in our history, previous years, history goes back a long way, that salt was used as a preserver, right? To preserve meats, right? So that you could eat them long term and they wouldn't spoil uh, in a day or whatever. And so um, we also know that too much salt within ourselves, the doctors say, isn't good, right? But if you have too low of salt, that's very dangerous for you. Right? So. Sodium chloride salt, right, is an element that we all learned about in chemistry. And um, they say that it really cannot, you cannot decompose, you cannot make sodium chloride not have taste. Now, my other experience with salt was when some sorority sisters would, 
you know, play around with other ones who were at the bar late and they put salt in their bed. And you could, when they came in at night, you could hear them going on their sheets, right, trying to get the salt out of their bed. Um, and, and that was no fun. But Jesus is saying to us, be the salt in the world, be the light in the world because it matters, right? But it doesn't matter because it'll make you look good or make me look good, right? It's because it's for the glory of God, right? Because it tells the world about God and God's grace and God's love and God's mercy and God's justice and, and forgiveness and and uh, be repairers of the breach, right? There's a lot of breaches out there. We're not called to be on either side. We're, we're called to be those people who repair and mend the breaches of the world, right? Who bridge things between darkness and light. To be the light that shatters darkness. Now, I know all of you, have, have any of you been in like, uh, you go to a hotel room and you're there and then there's like, a different light either it's coming through from the light on the street outside and, and your curtains don't close exactly or it's that alarm clock or it's the light from the hallway and then you just can't fall asleep right because you're like ah, this light and you get up and you try and do everything to, <laughs> to to make everything dark right because the light penetrates darkness and so Jesus uses all of these images to teach us right that light changes everything, and that salt does too. And that he's not saying you, he really means that you all phrase from the south, or you's all, wherever you're from, however you say it, you is a plural word, right? Because one grain of salt really won't change something that much, but a pinch of salt does, right? And so it's about us together, and the power of God working in us together. And I don't just mean Episcopalians, right? I mean everybody. I mean, one of the things I love about the big um, celebrations like Christmas and Easter is, is like just knowing how Christians, all Christians all over the world are celebrating those days. Sundays too, right? But Christians all over the world are celebrating those days. And that just, you know, is powerful to me. Right? It's powerful to me that Christians gather together to hear the word of God, to learn not so much because now I'm wiser, I got to the big 6-0 today. It said in here about being mature and wise, right? St. Paul said something about that, so I'm feeling it today. No more messing around. Um, I've reached the magic age. And so, right? And that, and, and that together we transform the world. Right, and not because I, not because we learn some magic, or not magic, but just because we learn one piece of knowledge, right? But because we support each other and we love each other with a different kind of world that the love know that the uh, different kind of love that the world knows, right? With practicing forgiveness, which the world knows nothing about, right? With with with. Set with uh, taking care of people at Stokely, taking care of the food bank, housing our homeless, right? Which the world says, you know what? Nah, they got that way. Like, you know, like, come on. Everybody should be able to make it in this world, right? Like, they must be lazy, or they must have a drug issue, or they must have they, 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 they. Keep them over there, because we know how to live. Look at us. We have shelter. We have food. We have a job, right? We have that, it's there. We might not say it or really admit it or think it, but sometimes there's a little bit of that there. But the world says that, right? This is what success looks like. And Jesus says, no, success is serving, right? Even the Old Testament talked about the kind of fast we have to live. It is a powerful, powerful scripture in Isaiah today, right? About the homeless. When you see the naked, cover them. Um, and uh, loose the bonds of injustice, undo the thongs of yoke, let the oppressed go free, break every yoke. Isn't that what the mission of Jesus was? And so our mission is, into, is to live into the mission of Jesus, right? The mission of Jesus is to everything we do, 
to do for the glory of God. I always love that prayer. Everything I say, everything we do, the scripture reading, let all that you do and say be done to the glory of God, right? Because that puts a little pressure on us, right? Is what I'm saying, is how I'm living, is what I'm doing, showing the glory of God, right? And it's God's glory, it's not mine. I don't need a, oh, kudos to you, you went in to become a pastor, or kudos to you, you gave to the poor, right? But I want the world to know that we believe in a God who calls us to serve others, to cause us to live selflessly, to cause us to know that darkness and sin is real and evil is real, and we've come to break that by being light or being salt. And it's in the little ways, right? It's in the little ways. It really is about taking our food to the food bank. It really is about um, speaking, even anymore, speaking to someone in line to you, right? Especially during COVID, we've gotten so far away from those social skills, right? It, it, because you don't know, you don't know if your word is the word of life they need to hear that day. We don't know that. Hey, how's your day going today? Right? Or, as I mentioned, taking the food or making room for people. Because we say, as Christians, there's room in the inn. There's room in the inn of God's love. There's room in the inn with justice. There's room in the inn with love. There's room in the inn with all that we do in serving this Jesus by serving others. So our fast is to get ourselves out of the way, right? To get our selfish ways out of the way. And to be open and humble and weak in the sense of being able to have the power of God work through us and within us, right? We're just called to be the salt. The rest of it's up to God. Right? We're just all called to be the light. The rest of it's up to God. Right? We're just called to be. Right? It, it, it's very clear. Be these things. You are is a being thing. Right? And none of it this says that, that our works are we're going to give make God happy at all. Right? God already gave us the gift of salvation. God already gave us the gift of Jesus. God already had Jesus die on the cross. God already raised Jesus, right? We don't have to do anything to receive that gift, but to be open to it and then walk in those ways. So it isn't do these works because they'll make you special, right? It's because God loves us and says to us all the time, I am here, which is what our works say, right? Our works, the things we do, how we live and are in the world, say to the, say to the world, God is here. God cares. God died for this. God rose for this. Right? And God's wanting to redeem it. And we are a part of that. And so scripture, the Beatitudes will go on for us in, their, in our Sundays, in, in our tradition, for the next three weeks until Lent. Right? So we're going to hear more. And I told you, buckle up, right? Last week, the Beatitudes were the nice, easy part of the, uh, of the Sermon on the Mount, right? The rest is, we're going to get to you. love your enemies, love those who persecute you, right? We're going to get to all that, so hang in. But be reminded that, that we, us all, are the light, we're the salt, we're called to be that, but for the mission of Jesus, for the glory of God, for the mission of Jesus, in the same way as Jesus came to serve us. We're called to come to come to serve others and get out of the way for the glory of God.